Welcome to the news on NTA International, reaching you from Abuja. You can watch this news live on our social media handles displayed on your screen. But first, let's start with the headlines. U.S. government concludes plans with military leaders in Niger to withdraw more than 1,000 troops. IMF Regional Economic Outlook projects Africa economy to rise to 3.8% in 2024. Plus, UN warns of new flashpoints in Sudan's Darfur region. Under the beaming lights of New York's iconic Times Square, Nigerian chess master Tunde Onokoya has broken the record for the longest chess marathon after playing for 58 consecutive hours. Onokoya hopes to raise $1 million, 805,000 pounds for charity to support chess education for millions of children. Hundreds of supporters from the city's Nigerian community have shown up to chair the chess master, including Nigerian Afrobeat star Davido. They provided music and energized him with supplies of classic Nigerian dishes, including the beloved national staple, jollof rice. Back home in Nigeria, people threw their support behind on Okoya as they watched him conquer the record. Meanwhile, President Bola Tundabu has congratulated Tundio Nokoya on setting a new world chess record in southern the gang of Nigerians' resilience, self-belief and ingenuity at the square of global acclaim. Nokoya broke the Guinness World Record for the longest chess marathon on Saturday after playing for over 58 hours and winning every match in tow. President Tundabu celebrates the champion and founder of Chess in Slums Africa, for the rare fit, but especially for the reason driving this compelling demonstration of character, which is raising funds for African children to learn and find opportunity through chairs. The president affirms that Nigerian youth have demonstrated in all fields, including Afrobeats, Nollywood, deposits, cut, skit making enterprise, education, science, and technology that great exports can truly come from small quarters. Vice President Kashim Shatima is confident that the Naira will continue to appreciate the forex market as the federal government will not relent in its reformative monetary policies. He said this when a delegation of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the Association of National Accountants of Nigeria paid him a cuts visit in his office at the presidential villa Abuja. State House correspondent Abdurrahman Jibrila reports. These stakeholders are committing their expertise in supporting government's drive towards addressing the economic challenges. Vice President Kashim Shatima appreciates their will, noting that the dollar will further crash against the Naira. He recalled the quality of leadership provided by President Tinibu as governor of Lagos State, which led the foundation for the massive development witnessed in the state, and that will be replicated in a larger scale. This government headed by President Tinubu is poised to redefine the meaning and concept of modern leadership. I have worked closely with him. I have seen his soul. Honestly, the President's obsession is to live in a place of glory. His obsession is to transform this country, is to catapult this nation to a higher pedestal. Beyond that, it's not about primitive capital accumulation. No, it's not about money. He has the money. But he wants to leave a legacy. A legacy of qualitative leadership. Because the hope of the black man, the hope of Africa, rests on this nation. The president, Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, urged the Tinibu administration to ensure a significant upswing in the face of alternative policy measures that promotes credit access stimulate investment and support entrepreneurship. The fundamental changes that have come with the removal of subsidy, the unification of the currency, has opened up a lot of opportunities which we believe that the government can fast track with a couple of, of policies and measures that we have discussed with the Vice President and we have proffered some solutions which can be implemented. 
and we have been assured by the Vice President that a couple of these are practical, they are doable, and he intends to consult with, his, uh, with the President. Meanwhile, Vice President Kashim Shatima has urged Nigerians to live peacefully and learn how to accommodate each other. He made the appeal when a delegation from the Association of National Accountants of Nigeria, led by its president, paid him a visit. The vice president was responding to an appeal made by the Anan president for land in Abuja to enable the association relocate its university to the FCT. And we are assuring government we are always on top of the accounting profession. And accountants, of course, will not disappoint. Um, they are trust. The trust from government because we have the necessary will. We have a disciplinary committee, we have a disciplinary uh, tribunal. Where any accountant is, we know how to tame them. The Anand president said there was need to introduce a new value orientation where the issue of discipline will become a culture for Nigerians, even as the association recommends the setting up of Anti Corruption Recovery Investment and Management Commission to prevent the relooting of recovered assets in the country. From the State House, Abraham Jibrila, NTA. The Nigerian Navy remains a strategic enabler in the attainment of poverty eradication, especially through the enormous potentials of the blue economy. Nigeria's first lady, Luremi Tinobu Sitevis, at the launch of the two high endurance offshore patrol vessels in Turkey, where she performed the age long tradition of slipping the ship into water. She says the 76 meters high vessels are a testament of the commitment of the Tinubu administration towards achieving a more secure maritime environment for economic development. Appreciating the Dearsan shipyard for the high quality shipbuilding capability as well as for attaining this milestone, the First Lady says that the gathering will undoubtedly strengthen relationship between Nigerian Navy and the shipyard as well as between Nigeria and Turkish government. It is my prayers that God bless this ship that we are launching today with her crew as they sail safely round the world and proudly fly the flag of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I pray the vessel will participate successfully in exercises and operations at both national and international levels. While expressing optimism that the newly launched vessels would enhance Nigeria's maritime sector, Minister of State for Defence Bello Metawali praises the Nigerian Navy's commitment towards not just securing the nation's territorial waters, but also seeing to improved blue economy. Chief of Naval Staff Vice Admiral Emmanuel Ogala notes that the commitment of President Bola Tinubu to the welfare of men of the Nigerian Navy and is resolved to provide all that is needed to enhance their job will ultimately result in reduced crimes in the maritime domain. In their remarks, Deputy Minister of Defence Sui Alpe and the Secretary of Defence Halek Kogan notes that there is room for more cooperation with Nigeria, not only in the area of security but also economic development. After months of delay, the U.S. House of Representatives is poised to hold a vote of tens of billions of dollars in American military aid for Ukraine and Israel this weekend. Both measures of vocal opponents in Congress, however, and their hopes of passage have hinged on a fragile bipartisan coalition to overcome daunting procedures and legislative obstacles. Speaker of the House Mike Johnson had said he is determined to bring the matter to a vote even if it may put this hold on par in jeopardy. The Ukraine vote will be closely watched in Kyiv, which has warned of an urgent need for fresh support from its allies as Russia makes steady gains on the battlefield. The United States says all its military personnel will leave the Republic of Niger ending their role in the fight against terrorism. Authorities in the U.S. say the government has firmed up plans with the military leaders in Niger to withdraw its more than 1,000 troops. The U.S. has also agreed to close down its big drone base near the city of Agadez in the country. Over years, the U.S. has relied on Niger as its primary base for monitoring regional jihadist activity. An American delegation is to head 
within days to Niger's capital, Niamey, to arrange an orderly withdrawal. Friday's announcement followed talks in Washington between the U.S. Deputy Secretary of State, Court Campbell, and Niger's Prime Minister, Ali Mohamed Zaini. After four challenging years and multiple shocks, Africa's economy is expected to rise to 3.8% in 2024 from 3.4% last year. For Nigeria to achieve its own share of economic growth for the year, the International Monetary Fund, which gave the projection in its regional economic outlook for sub-Saharan Africa, recommends that the country needs to increase tax to GDP by widening the tax base and minimizing tax exemptions in order to increase revenue mobilization. Continue to improve public finances with an emphasis on domestic revenue mobilization. This will help meet the region's vast development spending needs in the context of scarce concessional financing and high borrowing costs. Second, to sustain the focus on reducing inflation wherever inflation remains well above target. The IMF is impressed that public debt in Africa is stabilizing at around 60% of GDP as a few countries have been able to return to international markets but advises policymakers to trade cautiously. I think Nigeria first and foremost needs to diversify its economy. Second, this also applies to uh, the resources that the government relies on, which is, you know, uh, too much excessively on oil and not enough on non-oil revenue. For a country like Nigeria, Africa's most populous country, with all of those uh, development spending needs, we think it's problematic that tax revenue to GDP is only 8-9%, when it should be, you know, a lot higher so that, you know, uh, more resources can be spent on... on uh, building universities on uh, building infrastructure. For the institution, necessary reforms are needed for macroeconomic conditions to continue to improve in order to ensure that Nigeria can build its resilience to shocks, generate jobs, uh, diversify the economy and improve living standards. Senior UN officials have warned the Security Council of the risk of a new front opening in Sudan around the town of El Fasher in Darfur. This is as a result of recent bombardments and clashes in surrounding villages. Comfort Fashion reports. After a year of war between the armed forces of General Abdel Fattah al Boran and the paramilitaries of the Rapid Support Forces under the command of General Mohammed Hamdan Dagalu. It is crucial to keep the spotlight on the need to bring an immediate end to the war ravaging the Sudan and its people. Rosemary De Carlo, a UN Under Secretary General for Political and Peace Building Affairs, said the country is experiencing a crisis of epic proportions, which is wholly man made. She added that, despite repeated calls to cease hostilities, the warring parties have rather stepped up preparations for further fighting, with both the SAF and the RSF continuing their campaigns to recruit civilians. In particular, she voiced concern at the report of a possible imminent attack by the RSF on Al Fasha, the only capital of a five to four state it does not control, raising concern of a new front in the conflict. Al Fasha acts as a humanitarian hub for Darfur, which is home to about a quarter of Sudan's 48 million inhabitants. Until recently, the town had been relatively unaffected by the fighting, hosting a large number of refugees. Rosemary de Carlo warned that the violence poses an extreme and immediate danger to the 800,000 civilians who reside in Al Fasha. De Carlo added that fighting in Al Fasha could unleash bloody intercommunal strife throughout the four and further hamper the distribution of humanitarian aid in the region. Comfort, Fashion. NTA News. If you're watching the news at NTA International, more reports when we return. Thanks for being there.
In a bid to promote Nigeria's cultural heritage, United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization has unveiled a maiden edition of Cultural Festival in Abuja, tagged policy dialogue and safeguarding the intangible cultural heritage of Nigeria. Francis Udojo brings us the details. Nigeria boasts of a lot of rich intangible cultural heritage, housing traditions, practices, rituals and expressions passed down through generations. However, this heritage faces numerous challenges including globalization, urbanization and environmental changes. To address these challenges and ensure the preservation of Nigeria's cultural identity, UNESCO, in collaboration with an indigenous organization, Crossroads Culture Festival, decided to unveil the policy dialogue initiative aimed at replicating the Canadian planned event tagged Flavors of Nigeria Food Festival in Nigeria, slated to hold in August this year. We hope that this collaboration will strengthen cultural and other ties between Nigeria, Canada and UNESCO. Globalization has led to businesses being operated remotely and we're looking at how entrepreneurs in Canada can assess the markets in Nigeria and vice versa. The event, which will have stakeholders within and outside the country, is believed will foster cultural heritage, economic opportunities, unity and community building between the two countries. We believe that the, exchange, the cultural exchange uh, that these types of events uh, bring enrich our society, contribute to the exchange of ideas and perspectives. Our culture, our rich heritage, I'm bold to say that no other country has what we have anywhere in the world. Our culture is limitless, but the issue is how well do we know our culture? Have we translated our culture to each other? Organizers added that the event is set to mobilize international support for Nigeria's cultural preservation and also amplify UNESCO initiatives in safeguarding cultural heritage around the world. Francis Udojo, NT News. With more than 1 billion people speaking Chinese as their first language globally, the Chinese embassy in Nigeria has reaffirmed its continued determination to use her language as a tool for promoting cultural diversity in Nigeria and beyond. This commitment was made by the embassy's cultural counselor, Li Zhuda, at the celebration of the 2024 International Chinese Language Day in Abuja. Chukunonso Mwabweze has more. The Chinese language with its rich and unique characters, proverbs and poetry no doubt offers a window into the soul of one of the world's oldest civilizations. This event at the China Cultural Center to celebrate the power of language in bridging gaps and building bonds is put together by the Chinese Embassy in Nigeria and its Center for Education and Cooperation to mark the day. Our language, our pride, let's join hands together to celebrate our language together, work together to realize our Chinese dream and the Nigerian dream, which are dreams of peace, love, development, and win-win cooperation. Permanent Secretary, Federal Minister of Arts, Culture, and Creative Economy, James Sule, used the occasion to reiterate Nigerian government's commitment towards building a stronger cultural tie with China. Understanding that language is a crucial bridge between cultures, we assure you that the ministry is devoted to supporting language education and in initiatives that encourage the learning of Chinese language among Nigerians, thereby enhancing cultural literacy and global connectivity. Out of one in seven black people in the world, one is a Nigerian. Out of one in four Africans, one is a Nigerian. So we definitely have 200 and something languages spread all across the world. And we'll continue to celebrate that and hope to continue to collaborate with China on cultural exchanges. Observed 20th of April every year, the International Chinese Language Day is a day set aside by the United Nations to celebrate cultural diversity as well as promote equality in the usage of its six official working languages. <laughs> To 
Ukwuku Nonso Nwabweze, NTN News. Experts say skills and technology remain indispensable tools for the rapid and sustainable socio-economic development of any nation. This knowledge is the reason why the federal government had granted approval and licensed the Ultra Excellence College of Technology of Far Fort Uyo Kwaibom State to contribute to the manpower development of technologists with the maiden matriculation of 27 students. Clement Barikui reports. Seated here are 27 freshers of the Ultra Excellence College of Technology, Uyo Kwaibom State, admitted into four departments of computer science, electrical, electronic engineering, statistics, and accounting. It's a school that has a dream and vision of innovation. I want to become a scientist and I want to innovate things as others have done. It. Chairman Governing Council of the College, Reverend Ekwedeme Fanga, says the institution is coming to redefine the next generation as it focuses on innovation beyond artificial intelligence. As the motto defines redefining the next generation, Ultra Excellence Coach of Technology is looking at innovation beyond artificial intelligence. We can devise a, a machine that can power the home. It can power your refrigerator, it can power your, your air conditioner, can power the iron with a small thing, not necessarily solar. Nigeria has brains. There are many of us who are in various areas of science and technology and innovation. We have the knowledge and we, we are prepared to inculcate this knowledge into the students. So if Ultra Excellence can get itself its attention to acquisition of skills by its graduates, it will help to congest the labor market. With the coming on stream of Ultra Excellence College of Technology, Afarofort Uyo, the country's drive for technological advancement will be achievable with stakeholders' commitment to maintaining standards in the training of manpower. Clement Barikui, NTA News. A bill for an act to establish the Nigerian Content Development Council is now going through public hearing. The bill, which focuses on the non-oil and gas sector to provide for program and structure development expertise in made in Nigerian goods and services and promote economic diversification, especially in the agriculture and agro-allied industries. At the public hearing by the House Committee on Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring, the Federation of Association of Commodities of Nigeria commended the initiative on the bill, which it says has the potential to radically address many of the challenges hindering commodities exports in Nigeria. We shall be available, uh, invaluable as we work towards advancing the interests of our nation and ensuring a prospective future for all Nigerians. We have advocated over the years with various government agencies to bring certain position, create enabling environment for agriculture to thrive, for us to be able to export, to end foreign exchange, to create jobs, and to ensure that we produce standard quality product that is acceptable in the international markets, and to also stop capital flights, and this bill has rightly addressed most of the issues that we have been advocated. A technical committee to review and update the national erosion and flood control policy for effective implementation and compliance has been mandated by the Ministry of Environment. The committee's terms of reference is to carefully evaluate and include missing elements required in the policy with a view to addressing hazards induced by the extreme weather event. Charles Alpha reports. The Federal Ministry of Environment, in a bid to address the issues of erosion and flood, developed the National Erosion and Flood Control Policy in 2005. Following approval of the document by the Federal Executive Council, which was later launched by President Olusha Gwabasanjo. Emerging knowledge on erosion and flood control, experiences and lessons garnered on tackling erosion problems at watershed level from the department's flagship project of Nigeria Erosion and Watershed Management Project, NewMap. The document lacks essential elements, hence the urgent need for a review 
and updating of the 19-year-old document to make it more potent upon application. I cannot say we did a 100% perfect job then, but I think what we have here is accurate. But how about effectiveness? It has not been effective because we have not operated it. To please suggest what exactly we have to do to, uh, to make this uh, policy uh, ready for implementation. Uh, after this deliberation, this policy will make it work. Bakrisa is willing to wholeheartedly support the implementation of all the policies. It is expected that at the end of the review by the technical committee, grey areas will be sorted and included in the National Erosion and Flood Control Action Plan and presented to various stakeholders for implementation. Charles Alpha. And up next is the weather forecast for Sunday. And this is where we end the news. Thanks for watching. I am Olajide Bello.